Um, I'm going to give you a very short and brief overview of the six projects, and what you'll get is a sort of a, a one path to a possible take back of web search, the way you know Firefox took back the web. This take back is a long, long work. It's a hard work. Um, a bit difficult, but um, that's the path that I know, and that's the path that I work with with a bunch of people. So this is what I'm going to show you, and maybe you'll be convinced that the free software community and us and hackers and you know developers, blah blah blah, we can do something about it. Oops. Okay. So as you know, we have something uh, fantastic at our uh, fingertips. We have the uh, the most connected uh, uh, human-built. Uh, network of uh, recorded history. It's, it's the internet. And on, and on this network, we have basically a massive flow of data. Um, and this data, we, we can categorize them in two, in two categories. Human um, generated and human target, targeted data and machine to machine data, right? So in this context, what is search? Search is this basic uh, operation for humans to look up some human uh, targeted content throughout this massive amount of data, okay? Search is, is, uh, is this uh, fascinating uh, characteristic that uh, we all depend on it. You know, most of the time we, we, we look at, we ask something to, to Google or Bing or whatever search engine before we even ask our friends. So we're really dependent on, on, on these engines. And also the level of, of uh, um, technicity that is required uh, and the, the usage that is required by users to use this engine is, is has low variance. What it means is that whether you're my mother or you're a power searcher, so-called power searcher, the tools that you're using, the way you're using Google or any other engine, is, is it's almost the same, right? The power searcher is maybe a little bit better, but it's, it's almost the same. So what happens is we all we are all dependent on search, um, and we all use it. And uh, if you're lucky to not have uh, uh, understood or seen this before, uh, as users we're locked up, and we're locked up in several ways. First, because we are we're uh, interacting with black boxes, proprietary black boxes, which means that basically you've all experienced this: typing in some keywords, getting some results back. You're not satisfied with the results, you change the keyword, you get another uh, query and so on and so on and you iterate that until you get satisfied. And sometimes you just get garbage, right? And the machine will never tell you that you got garbage because the machine will never tell you that she doesn't know, that it doesn't know actually. Okay, so uh, you can't give feedback. That's, that's the first lockup. You, uh, the second lockup is very important to me. It's basically we're all doing the same queries over and over again in our own corner. We're isolated. Okay. If I if I look for something uh, and I read the form and I find I find at the end of the form that the answer to my question is not there, uh, the hundred or the thousand of people behind me who, who are going to do the same query, well, they'll do the same thing, right? They'll go through the form and read it again. So we're isolated. The third uh, lookup is that um, we're all experts in something, right? We we look things on on uh, we're typing queries to these search engines, and we we we're all experts in something, but we distill our queries to these search engines and we keep nothing on our machines, right? So we don't build profiles of expertise that, are, that, that should be ours. So the point here is truly web search is lagging behind and, and there are reasons for this. I'll try to uh, tell you why. But the way I can convince you that it's lagging behind is that we're millions, even billions of users and every day there is an estimated one billion query uh, being issued on the search engines. And of course, these queries, they're rooted in reality, right? We're looking in the infosphere for things that are real. Uh, recipes, medicines, uh, whatever, right? But we're looking for something real. And since we're looking for something real, we're many of us, we're looking for similar things, right? But we cannot interact. There is no feedback. We cannot share our queries like we can share something else. So what is six? Six is an open architecture, and it's a free software application that tries to fill this, the gap in web search by, by making it collaborative, making it uh, uh, social. And the main idea is that a social web search is inevitable. It will happen. Whether six succeeds or whether some other people come up with better ideas, it doesn't matter. In the end, we'll do search together, okay? The way we do some other things together. 
the, the, the idea behind six, the main idea is very, very simple. It's very natural too. It is to regroup users who perform similar or identical queries so they can share and collaborate on the results. That's all. This simple idea has many interesting consequences. So I'll try to describe six with just this slide, very briefly. Basically what happens is that six regroups people in real time in so-called search groups around similar queries, okay? So people who type similar queries, they get regrouped in search groups. These search groups, these people in the in these search groups, they can work together. So we give them collaborative filtering tools. To, to work together. So these tools, they, they allow them to exchange results uh, uh, automatically or, or actively by clicking, but, uh, to uh, uh, recommend results, to uh, toss results away, to do a lot of things. Right? So basically, it gives the ability to these people to process data. And, and the third point is very uh, important is we allow some users to push some more data to the search groups for them to process. So let me give you an example. If you have a blog and you write a new entry to your blog, what you're going to do is you're going to devise like a, a, a few query, or at least one query that describes your new entry of your blog. You're going to do that, you know, typing that query into six. You're going to be regrouped with people who did similar queries. But instead of looking at the results that you get from the search engine, you'll push your content. Okay? You'll say, hey, this is an, a potential new result for you guys. If you've been lying, it means if, you're, if your query is not in adequation with the content, you'll get tossed. Okay? People will say, okay, that's, that's, that's garbage, we don't want it. If you do this, the groups, the filtering, and the publication to the groups, you can build a real-time, collaborative, and fair search engine. Fair because anyone can push some data. Okay, here's the important thing. Uh, why do we need to do it? Uh, if social web search, you know, social web search is a, is a simple idea. Why doesn't it exist? You know, all these big companies, they, they, they could do it. There's one reason. The business model of these companies, right? The existing engines, they feed on user personal data in exchange for the service that they give you. These data, they use to target advertising and generate revenues for these engines, right? So if you, if you let users share their queries and, and you know, be clustered into uh, groups of people of, with similar interests, and if you let people push them some content, give them some more content and results, like advertisers, then these advertisers, they don't need to go through the uh, existing paywalls like AdWords or, or some others. They don't need to go to these cent centralized entities and pay the, 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 and pay the fee to be able to, to uh, push their results. So, so basically what happens is that these existing search engines, because of the business models that they have, that work, but you know, because of these business models, they, they will never do it. And the proof, the fact, is that today, with things that you may like or don't like, doesn't matter, like Facebook and others, they're still lagging behind. They haven't done it, okay? And the lockup is this. It's because they simply cannot do it. Okay, six builds uh, on, on a few principles. I, 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 I will outline them uh, very quickly. The first one is uh, if you want to take back web search, you got to give more uh, control to users over the, uh, the search algorithms. Uh, what six does is that it, groups, it regroups the people so they're together. Once they're together, they can work together and they have more control over their results and, and uh, um, the algorithms. The second thing is transparency. Trans transparency means that you're able to modify the equations, the ranking, the way the, way the ranking is done in the engine freely. Okay? You, you do not have to rely on proprietary code and equations uh, 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 and let your results be uh, ranked by them. So the way Six does this is that it's a free software. So it's, it's one of the reasons why it's a free software. But it's a free software and so it lets you do, do change the code as you want and this does not impact the other users. Also, the third principle is fairness in content deployment. By letting people push some results to the search groups, to people who search similar content as they do, this removes the crawlers, so we don't need to recopy to copy the web every five minutes again and again. Okay? So it removes the crawlers. We're, on the, we're pushing more data to the, to the, to the, the groups. But also, it's, it's more fair because anyone can push some data. Okay? We're not dependent on the SEOs or if you have more money than others, you can you know, make your website better. So it's, 
well recognized by the, uh, the, the existing crawlers. Finally, the, one of the most important points is that SIG takes uh, the user privacy uh, very seriously. And for this reason, it builds a decentralized architecture. Okay? SIG relies on a peer-to-peer -peer network. The way it works is that you install SIG on your machine. You don't need like a, it can be a desktop, a laptop, it can be a Shiva plug. It works on all these devices. You install SIG on your machine and it will learn from your behavior and navigation and also uh, from your queries that you're typing in every day. And it will build a profile for you, a filter through which you look at the results from other search engines or whatever feeds you're using. These profiles over the peer-to-peer -peer network, they exchange fragments of information through the search groups to help each other improve your results and get some more some recommendation and so on. Okay, that's the way it looks. Sorry for the bad. Uh, okay, that's it. okay. Actually, so it looks just like another search engine, right? You can use it every day. You get no loss of uh, results, like of quality of results. It uses existing engines to get uh, uh, results. You can use whatever other feeds you you want. And see the little stars and the recommendation on the on the right. They're like uh, uh, they're information that is shared by the users. Okay, so here's the roadmap. The first step was to build the uh, what seems in, in my knowledge is the only uh, free software meta search engine. Okay, and this is done. We can search for text, image, videos, uh, tweets. There are some nice tools built in, and, and we're done with this. This is something you can install on your on your own laptop or on your desktop. The second step, which is coming up soon, is the the rising of a peer-to-peer -peer net that connects all these six nodes together. Okay, so whatever you do on your machine, if you let it do so, it will have an impact to other people searching similar si things as yours. And this, in this impact will be proportional to the similarity of your profile to some other user's profile. Okay? The third step is that you let, on this network, people push some more content to the search groups, freeing ourselves from the existing engines and becoming more real-time. The fourth step is like the step for the end of times that we will probably never see. Okay, but it's interesting though to have it in mind. So when you wake up in the morning, you know where you're going. Um, if you let the web ser servers index their own content and build queries that describe their content and hook them up on the search groups and push this information to the search groups, then you free yourself completely from the crawlers, okay? So that's for the end of time. We can move gradually, it's a long path toward this end. But this end should work. There is no technical reason why it wouldn't work. And in the end, we would not index, we index the entire web, but just be more active in the push uh, our receive mode. Okay. Uh, if you're interested in the project, you can test it. You can test some uh, public nodes, 6.fr, and there's some others. You go on the, on the website, 6project.info. They have a bunch of like uh, six nodes that are uh, maintained by volunteers, and you can play with them on a day to day basis. Uh, I mean, I use it on, the, on a daily basis, and I'm a, I'm a hardcore searcher, and I have no problem. The quality of the results is, is uh, uh, in my opinion, even better than, uh, than other engines. Uh, you can get in touch with us on IRC. We have a bunch of interesting tasks that uh, need to be addressed. So uh, I'll give you an overview here. There, if you like peer-to-peer -peer network, if you like distributed hash tables, if you uh, if you like network security, there are a lot of interesting issues we need to address. Um, uh, database also replicated databases. We move slowly but surely, uh, and uh, we need a, a lot of different uh, competences. The second. Uh, point is machine learning. If you like machine learning, if you want to learn more about machine learning, um, and if you're willing to participate, please come in. There are a lot of interesting tasks um, to be addressed. And eventually, uh, what you can do with SIX is that, as it is a free software, you can build the user interface of your dream. You don't need to rely on the user interface that the existing engines give you a change whenever they want, right? You can build whatever you want. So uh, I'm a like, C++ developer. <laughs> Um, I can't really design UIs, so I consider that this is a job for the community and, and users to like do whatever they want, try whatever they want. If it fails, it fails. If it's good, it's good. And uh, okay, so, so that's all. The uh, the point being, uh, come and help us if you like the project, and uh, or try to use it and see if if it's uh, any good for you. Thank you.
you very much. <laughs> oh, wow. Are you Do I have time for questions or not? Uh, One. Not really. No. Okay. <laughs>